Well, hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, who is this talking to you? Well, it's your fearless leader, Manoli. He's back again. Back, back. The Comeback King is coming back for another another episode for you. How about it? How about it? He's been a busy little son of a you-know-what, but, uh, you know, this is a family show. Yeah, it's a family show, yeah. Well, what the hell? Let's just talk. How about that? Let's just talk, and what happens, happens. You know, we, we like to go off the rails here, so it is it is what it is. Um, is. I'm sitting here like... A 90-year-old man. I got my robe on. I got these new glasses. They uh, they block out the blue light. Have you heard about this? The blue light. It's on your phone. It's on your television. It's on your computer. It's on everything. The blue light. And what it does is it messes up your sleep patterns. And it makes your eyes. It causes your eyes to strain. And I'm thinking, well, no wonder. You go to the work and you're, st- you're staring at a computer three inches away from your face all day. You're looking down at your phone. You're going back home watching TV. You look at your phone before you go to bed. And your eyes, they feel like they got blood shooting from them all day long. So no wonder. No wonder my eyes were freaking miserable. And let me tell you something else. My life has changed drastically for the better since I got these glasses. They're wonderful. They're stylish and they, you know, they... They accentuate my uh, congenial personality, and you know they really—they're uh, a good fashion accessory, and uh, and they have a functional purpose as well. So, I highly recommend you get some blue light blockers. They, this is what they do. This is how they get us. They—they they want to tire us out. The powers that be. So they put this blue light, and it's shining on us at all hours of the day making our eyeballs. They want us to be blind. I think is what it is. But well, I'm not having it. Not on my watch, baby. Get some blockers. But uh, anyway, that I better stop with the conspiracies before they come and whack me. But anyway, um, you know, they, they, you know, you say, it's like, uh, you know, <laughs> it's like, you know what they say. It's like, who is they? Who is this mysterious? Who is they? The powers that be, they. But I digress. Uh, oh, apparently I say that a lot, so. If you're keeping score at home, that, that's there's your excuse me, there's your first one for the episode. So there's that. Um, anyway, so what have I been up to? Well, well, uh, other than acting like my old self with my robe, you know, it's not even good. It's there's a heat wave outside, and I got a robe on, so just let's justify that. I got my fan on. I always have a fan on. I, I got to have air circulate. I can't just breathe in a bunch of stagnant air all the time. Between that and the blue lights, it's a wonder. I mean, they want to beat you down. They want to take away your air quality. They want to make your eyeballs hurt. Who knows what they put in the water? These people, they, again, they, the powers that be. Well, of course, you know, I'm saying I think, but you know, that way they can't, I can't be sued. So there's that. Um, what am I talking about? You see, it's been three minutes and thirty seconds. I've already, I've already blown it. I've already gone completely off the rails. But that's okay. What are we here for? What are we here for? We're here to have fun. That's that's my motto. You know, we're here for a good time. That's it. What the hell is that commercial? I don't even know what. Why do I have this on? It's on mute. I have the TV on mute. I was had it on something else, and I just let it play. But uh. Anywho, uh, what have I been up to? Well, last month, I went to La France, and uh, it was uh, very nice. Uh, it was très magnifique, and uh, that's about the extent of my French, so uh, voila. Um, yes, I went to France, and it was a wonderful time. It was me and my father, my father and my sister, and we went, uh, my sister is... Uh, She's in college now, and she's t- doing a summer semester over in France, which uh, that's pretty nice. I was supposed to study abroad one semester, and then COVID happened, so there you go, huh? Not that I'm bitter about it, but, you know, we, we keep moving forward. Um, No, I'm okay. Um, I'll get over it, you know, maybe 20, 30 years from now. But anyway, um, what was I saying? Anyway, so she's going over there. She, she studies... Uh, engineering or something she's a lot smarter than i am so 
environmental engineering, which I, I mean, I can't even define that. So she's pretty smart, apparently. So I've heard uh, Yeah, she's smart. Anyway, so we're going over there. We're taking her over. My, you know, she's going over to study abroad. Of course, she can't. You know, she needs help to get her across the pond there. You know, she can't just go alone. Uh, she needs us. Right. Right. At least that's what I told myself when I agreed to tag along with her and my father. So, uh, yeah, so I took off my, I took off that Friday, and I took a half day, actually, and I went to the airport, old Charleston International Airport, and uh, it's really easy there. You know, it's, it's about the size of a parking lot, and uh, you just kind of go in, you check in, and, of course, I get pre-checked for my job, and so I... Uh, you kind of just waltz on through, you know, you, you know, take your shoes off, you keep your belt on, you, you have to take off your jacket, don't have to remove your computer. This is a wonderful thing, uh, the free check, but I'm very lucky, so let's, let's just put it that way. Um, so we go on the plane, and uh, somehow I got upgraded, which I don't know how, I, uh, somebody must have, something happened, I got upgraded, so that was nice. And then I flew from Charleston to JFK, you know, enjoying the extra, extra room there. I don't know how that happened. I'm not, I'm not a, I'm like a scrub when it compares to some of these frequent flyers, but I'm, I'll take what I can get. Um, anyway, so we fly, I fly to JFK. I go by the Sky Lounge. You know, it's an overnight flight, so you kind of, uh, you get a little boozed up and you're ready to go, right? So, at least that's what most people do. I mean, the airport nowadays, it's like they, they drink it at 8 a.m., 9 a.m. Everybody's everybody's hammered at the airport. So there you go. Not that I get hammered, you know. I'm, I keep, I, uh, you know, I have one and that was it. Just one. Right? So anyway. Uh, anyway, so I get on the plane. And I, I don't I don't need all the preambles with the you know you, the overhead bins and this and that. I just I just go. I sit down. I put my bag under the seat, and I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to be disturbed. If there's somebody next to me, but nice to meet you, I put on the blinders and I'm out. I, I don't care. I did try to watch a movie. I watched a Casino with you know Scorsese, which I hadn't seen in quite some time. I probably have seen that movie. I don't know, a dozen times, but I hadn't seen it in years at this point, and I forgot. It's actually pretty good. Um, unsurprisingly, you know, I like Scorsese, so there's that. Joe Pesci's great in that movie. He's, he's really good. He's he's like my favorite actor, you know, because he's, you know, I'm, I'm a shorter guy. He's a shorter guy. He, uh, I, I, I relate to Joe Pesci in a way, so, which I'm sure comes as a big surprise to anybody who's ever listened to me talk before. But uh, anyway, and then eventually I passed out. And uh, what do you know? You wake up and you're in La France at the Charles de Gaulle airport. Um, anyway, so my father and my sister, they went out the day before. So I was I was at it alone. And uh, yeah, so I go through customs. I get everything done. I catch an Uber to the hotel. I fall asleep and uh anyway you wake up and I'm at the hotel which is the uh I forget what the hell it was called but it was by the uh it's close to the Arc de Triomphe the Arc de Triomphe and which is a magnificent thing anyway so I digress oh there's there's two um anyway so I got the hotel I took a nap naturally my father and my sister they were out walking around doing a walking tour and they're like, you want to meet me? And I'm like, what? you want to meet us? I'm like, uh, no. So I took a nap. <laughs> and I woke up and I, I met up with them. And we uh, actually, we went to the opera that night. We saw, we went to the Opera Bastille, which is the new one. In Paris, there's the old opera house, the Palais Garnier, which is uh, one of the most magnificent buildings you'll ever see in your life. I mean, it's just beautiful inside and out. Um but the stage and all the touring were smaller, so they don't they don't do a ton of stage opera there anymore. So they do a lot more at the Bastille, which is a new house, which is also big, uh, which is a very large house. And um, anyway, so we saw La Boheme by Puccini, of course, which is one of the great operas, one of the most popular operas, and 
I hadn't seen. I've seen it before. I saw it at the Met, uh, the Zeffirelli production, which is beautiful, and uh, I've I've seen that. And of course, I mean, if you're an opera fan, you've heard La Boheme at least twenty times, probably. So, hey, I, I'm not knocking it. It's it's just very popular. But that's that's fine. I, I think it's a master masterpiece. I think it's beautiful. You know, Puccini is his knack for the drama and the. I mean. A, his melodies are just, he was a great melodist, you know, he was just great at writing great, memorable melodies. And then he had a really, a really good uh, knack for the drama, dramatic irony and all that stuff. So he, uh, I always, I always admire Puccini's works. Um, most of them anyway, I'm, I don't like uh, some of them, but that's okay. Most of them I like, you know, I can't like everything people. So, uh, but overall, Puccini is a marvelous composer. He's one of my favorites. Um, anyway, so La Boheme. So we're there, and uh, the product, uh, singing, first of all, the singing was uh, uh, pretty good across the board, I have to say. It was, uh, I was very pleased with everyone. I would, not that, you know, I mean, what do you expect? You know, the, these are professionals, they know what they're doing. So uh, musically, it was, a, it was a very good performance, musically. Uh, direction was good the singing was was good uh everyone was all the world doing their best and uh no i mean you know they sang they sang it well so that's good the production was uh interesting and you know another example of this new tradition we have of uh over complicating things i'd say you know director's theater they call it um Anyway, so the production was, uh, it was on the moon instead of uh, Paris in the 1800s. It's on the space station on the moon. And uh, there was like a whole nother plot going on concurrent with uh, what was supposed to be the opera's plot. And uh, most of the actors, they had one guy was acting and one guy was in a space suit trying to be the the character so Rodolfo there was two of him on stage almost the entire time they were moonwalking and I'm sorry it's just you know why why I, I don't know why they do this I don't understand it. I didn't understand what the what the concept behind the production was it was just it was unnecessary to say the least I I you know I like the traditional productions I you know, if you, I guess if you live in Europe, you know, you've seen, you know, operas everywhere. So, I mean, that's fine, but I don't live in Europe. I live in Charleston, South Carolina. We don't have much opera. And if I want to, I mean, if I go to the opera, I would like to see something that's, you know, true to the intentions of the composer and the librettist. But uh, I guess that's too much to ask for these days. But, uh, you know, I, and I'm not trying to knock. I'm not trying to knock anybody involved, but I just, it was not, it was not for me. Let me just say that it was confusing. I mean, I, 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 La Boheme is, you know, a charming thing. This made it like depressing. Like everyone died at the end. They, they, they took off their helmets on the moon and suffocated. So there's that, but uh, anyway, but yeah, the production was a no for me, but the singing was good. So you could just kind of close your eyes and imagine that you were watching a traditional production, but uh yeah, I, uh, I just, you know, and here's the other thing. You know, I've seen La Boheme. My father and my sister never seen La Boheme. They, you know, they probably wanted to have the real experience, but it's okay. It is what it is. You know, the singing was good. And at the end of the day, you know, you're mostly there for the music. So I guess it's okay. Um, I, I guess, am I going to get in trouble with the powers that be there? Oh, you don't like. You don't like the director's seat, or no, I don't. I, I would rather just let's just play it the way it's meant to be played. These works do not need our help. Essentially, they don't need our help to try to update it or make it relevant or with the times or whatever the hell. I, I. moving on, man. Um, but yeah, over, overall, you know, the singing was good, and that that's good. That's good. Musically, fantastic. No, no complaints. Anyway, moving on. So we went to dinner, had some champagne, some soul, which is marvelous. I had a Dover soul. Um, I mean, her, her 
is it Doversoul or is it? The... Anyway, I had some soul, the fish, and it was uh, really good. Uh, I actually had that a couple of times while I was there. It's one of my favorite things. Uh, nothing like a good soul. And you know, the th I have to say, the food over there is just, oh, man, it's so good. I mean, you're walking through France. I mean, you're walking through the streets of Paris, and there's hundreds and hundreds of restaurants. You could go into any of them, and chances are it's going to be pretty freaking good. The prices aren't so bad. Uh, in most places, it's okay. And uh, the food is good. You can tell the ingredients are fresh. Uh, and it's it's good food. And then you, you're walking so much, you basically just walk it off. So, I mean, the food is just fantastic. I mean, it's fresh ingredients. It's good. It, it You know, the, the people are nice. Everything is good. And, uh, I mean... That, that's one of the highlights of the whole thing. I mean, it's just the, the character of the of the French cuisine is really nice. Um, really, really good. So there's that. I, I really enjoyed the food. What else did I eat? I mean, I had soul. I had duck quite a few times. I had, you know, mussels. I had, I had it all, man. I, I ate all the stuff, all the, all the foie gras and, all of that souffle. Uh, they had this the one of the specialties there is this egg and mayonnaise thing. It's like a it's like a deviled egg with mayonnaise. It's pretty good. Um, I don't usually like mayo, but uh, you know, it's different there. So, I mean, everything was good. It was really. I mean, the food was its own thing. I mean, I must say, a metric ton while I was over there. So, uh, it was good. You know omelets and croque-matons and croque monsieurs and all that stuff and it was uh the food was really good so there's that uh, unsurprisingly but you know i had to I had to make a mention of it i mean whether wherever we ate was fantastic i mean that there wasn't a bad meal on the entire trip anyway moving on so the next day we went to uh disneyland paris which was very interesting um uh my family are big disney they could, we we went to Disney a decent amount when I was growing up. Uh, it's not too far from us, you know, from, from Charleston to Orlando, nothing. So we, we went a few times, and uh, it was... Uh, I've been to one in Anaheim, too, so that I went there in 2017. And so I, I never thought I would see the French version, which, you know, I, I guess... Uh, because things change. It's, it's really easy. You just take, you just get on the train. It's not that far. You get on the train from Paris and you just go. And uh, it was interesting. Um, I liked the design. I thought it was, well, it looks like the, the grounds and the structures. I mean, it looks really cool. And then uh, they had, you know, they had the rides. They had, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, Haunted Mansion, all that stuff. And they had a, uh, yeah, they had good rides, and uh, the funny thing was, uh, everybody was because <laughs> if you go to Disney in the states, it's like you don't see anybody smoking or anything. But here, everybody was smoking. Everybody was just walking around puffing on cigarettes. I don't smoke, but I just thought it was funny. Um, different culture. Um, but anyway, so we we went, and uh, it was definitely a unique experience just seeing like the different versions of the rides. Uh, you know, Tower of Terror, Haunted Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean. The Space Mountain was pretty cool. It was Star Wars themed, and it was uh, not at all like the one in Florida. The one in Florida is, you know, older, and it kind of just like, oh, you go up, and it dips, and it banks, and it turns. This one had, like, I mean, this one was intense. It launched you straight, it launched you straight up. It had loop-de-loops and corkscrews. I was like, man, this is not the Space Mountain I'm used to. It was Star Wars themed, which I'm a big Star Wars fan. So it was like you were flying on the Millennium Falcon with lasers going off and shooting things. It was uh, it was pretty cool. I really liked that. Um, but yeah, they had the ride in Suey Land. And I they have that ride in Florida, but I never done it. I, I, I never saw it, and that that was pretty cool too. Which I guess is fitting, you know, seeing as where we were. Um, that's a good ride. They they had they had a lot of good rides. It was. Uh, the good thing is, it's like the two the two parks are like right next door to each other, so you can just walk from one and go to the other. And 
we knocked it out. We did it all in, in one day, and it was uh, it was really enjoyable. And then we headed we headed back to Paris because it's on the outskirts, you know. And uh, we headed back there. And uh, yeah, the next day we went to the Louvre, which is you know, if you go to Paris, you have to see the Louvre. I mean, this is the thing. And, and uh, anyway, so we went to the Louvre, which was really interesting. And we had a, a fantastic guide, and she taught us some of the more some of the more historical context as to what the Louvre was. It was uh, initially a fortress. And then it was a castle built on top of a fortress, and then it was a palace, and now it's a museum. So there's that. And the interesting thing is you can actually go down, and they have excavated the like the original wall of the Louvre Fortress, which was built in, I don't know, 1100s, 1200s, something like that, which is, you know, it's pretty old. And that was really cool to see. And it was... Uh, it was interesting, like where you were standing would have been like where the moat was. So that was, uh, that was cool. You know, it's like, it's like, um, I mean, even just the buildings over there, they have layers to them. They have layers and history. And, and I mean, every building's like a work of art over there. It's really magnificent. Just, just the style and the architecture. And, you know, it's, I mean, the place is just so old and there's so much rich culture and history and designs and architectural stuff and art and uh, i mean all of it it's really a fantastic place um anyway so that's that's kind of i really enjoy that about the city just say like every, almost every building is like its own work of art not like not like today man the buildings are depressing and anyway i'm moving on um anyway so yeah we were at the louvre and uh i got to see all the old statues of antiquity, the Greek statues, the Aphrodite de Milos. Yes, from from Milos, not the not the Venus de Milo. Her name is Aphrodite. This is the Greek version. This is the original. So let's call her by her true name, please. And uh yeah, so Aphrodite and the statue of Alexander and the the Niki, the Winged Victory, which is a marvelous statue, and very imposing. On the, you go up the stairs, and there, there it is with the wings out. She's on the prow of the ship. It's really, that's one of my favorites. And uh, of course, you see the Mona Lisa, and so many, I mean, marvelous paintings by Da Vinci and uh, all those guys. Um, yeah, so you see the Mona Lisa, and then. You, you turn around and there's this gigantic painting behind it. It's like, well, who painted that man? You know, not, not to take anything away from Da Vinci. I mean, he was a genius in the Mona Lisa. is iconic, of course. And, but it's like, man, I mean, there, but there's so many, there's so many good paintings there. And there's so much talent. And, and I mean, there's just no way to take it all in. I mean, there's so many masterpieces there. It's really amazing. And so we walked and we walked through, you know, saw the Mona Lisa saw the crown some of the crown jewels of france which was uh interesting and the room that the the crown jewels are in it was actually the room was fashioned by louis 14 and he fashioned it basically as uh for his mother to stay in there because she was uh she was in charge for a while and she didn't want to relinquish control the louis 14 so he he basically designed this really elaborate room in the louvre that's very beautiful very beautiful but he, he basically uh put his mother under house arrest there and said uh okay now you just stay there this is your this is your gilded prison cell and uh well i don't know how that <laughs> he wanted control louis but there you go uh Anyway, but that's where the crown jewels are, and that was that was pretty cool. I hadn't seen those before. I've been to Louvre. I want to say, I guess I went two times before that. So, I've been a couple of times. I've been to Paris three times. That was my third time. Uh, I guess. I mean, I, I don't even know why I had to clarify that. I went once when I was fifteen, and I went once when I was nineteen on the choir trip. We don't need to talk about that because there were some stories from that trip that are not suitable for the family nature of this podcast. Um, and then I went once now, so that's like four years apart. So I guess I'll be back in four years. Um, anyway, so 
it was cool to see something I hadn't seen before. I mean, the, it's very interesting. And I, I liked getting the historical perspective. I, I love history. So, and we walked through and we saw uh, some of the paintings, The Massacre of Hios, which is of great personal importance for me and my family. My grandfather's from the island of Hios. And uh, The Massacre of Hios is a marvelous painting by Eugene Delacroix of uh, the Ottoman invasion of the island where they slaughtered 30,000 people in one day. So uh, it's uh, very stirring and uh, it's sad. It's, I mean, it's a masterpiece, but it's, it's really grisly at the same time. I mean, the way that Delacroix paints the violence and the, the horror of this event is just, um, it's very moving in person, especially with the, when you have a personal connection with the island and the event itself. And it was painted in the midst of the Greek Revolution, which uh, Delacroix was a supporter of, vocal, vocal advocate of the revolution. A lot of, uh, there was a lot of uh, sentiment for the Greek struggle uh, from other nations, especially a lot of France. So uh, they were, they were helpful. Um, anyway, so that, that, that was, that was something we had to see that was of great importance to us and, you know, for our family, just because anyway, but saw that and you know, the Raft of the Medusa, that's another masterpiece. And a Liberty Leading the People, that's another Delacroix, which uh, was painted, you know, kind of, it's kind of like a Les Mis connection there. So there's that. And uh, I mean, so many great paintings. And so, I mean, such a little time, you know, I mean, you can't, there's no way to see it all. I mean, so many great paintings. The Coronation of Josephine is gigantic. I think that's the biggest painting they have in the Louvre. I mean, I don't even know how big what the dimensions are, but I mean, it's just massive, and it's just this scene that Napoleon commissioned for himself because, you know, essentially they overthrew the king, and they traded it in for an emperor, but, you know, I guess you live and you learn. <laughs> um, but anyway... Um, but yeah, and then of course I love seeing the old Greek statues and the, the, I mean, the authentic ones, not the ones that were copies by the Romans, the authentic Greek statues. So there's that, I mean, the Louvre is fantastic. So definitely have to go see that always, always worth the visit if you're ever in La France. But, uh, anyway, so then we walked around that night, we went to Harry's bar, which is like, uh. American bar right in the middle of, of France, which is very interesting, right at the heart of Paris. This is American bar. It has like the pennants of the college football teams and stuff, and it, it's pretty cool. So we stopped there. Apparently, it's very famous, and uh, it had a drink, walked around. We walked up and down the Champs Elysees, which is nice, especially at night when it's all lit up, and uh, the Eiffel Tower is lit up at night. It's beautiful, and it has a, the the flashing lights and the beacon, it's uh, really something. And so, yeah, we walked uh, we walked up and down there, up and down the Champs-Élysées, all the way back to the Arc de Triomphe and back to our hotel. So that was a good day. The next day we went to Versailles, or some people like to call it Versailles. Um, yeah, we went to old Versailles when I was in France, and uh, yeah, it was what a, what a hell of a, what the hell was Chateau old Louis built there? Um, Versailles is something. I mean, it's uh, it's it's a beautiful place. Um, they they spared no expense with that place. So, uh, you know, I think I think one day I think I'd like to live there. I think I'll buy it back from you know France. I th I think I will. I think uh, I think that's just enough space for me. You know, it's a, my modest little summer home. You know, no big deal. Or maybe I'll just recreate it here in, in Charleston. I'll build a replica of Versailles. Uh, but, I mean, obviously, it's a magnificent place. It, it's interesting because, you know, people are not happy that they built the palace, and which is fine. I, I can see why. Um, and then all of these years later, now they make a ton of money off the of visitors from the palace. So there you go. I guess they recouped on their investment. Um 
But I mean, I mean, the the place is beautiful. You know, it it was raining there. It's always, you know, I like to talk about the weather. Apparently, so some people really harp on that with me. I always talking about the weather. Listen, people, I wanted to be a meteorologist when I was a young lad. So just if I want to talk about the weather, it's my freaking show. How about that? It's my show. I'll talk about it if I want to. It was overcast that day. Little droplets of rain were coming down as we were ready to go inside for the tour. But then it subsided as we went into the palace. And we walked down the Hall of Mirrors and into the rooms and saw the paintings and the the quarters of the king and the queen. And we walked all the way down. We walked up and down the gardens. The extensive gardens, my I add, I mean, my goodness, I don't know what the landscaping bill there is. It's at that place, but uh, not cheap. And they they played the fountains. It was, uh, yeah, that place is no joke. I mean, it's really over the top. I mean, do you really need a house that big? I I don't know, but I tell you what, it's fun to visit. Um, but yeah, I think I I think one day that'll be my summer home for size. I, I think that's enough. It'll just be me there. Nobody else can visit. I'll have the whole place to myself. Actually, who am I kidding? We'll we'll throw. We'll throw parties in the Hall of Mirrors. Um, it'll be fun. Yeah, I, you're all you're all invited. All my listeners are invited. You know, we'll have a good time. We'll we'll be you know, it'll be it'll be a good time. You're all invited to Manoli's house party at Versailles. So there you go. Um, but yeah, we were walking all around and up and down the gardens, which are beautiful. I took some great pictures. Um, yeah, it's really it's really interesting. It's uh, it is it is something. Um, you know, like I said, my modest summer home. So one, one day, people, one day, one day we'll all be there. Uh, anyway, so then we went back to Paris proper because Versailles is on the. Oh my goodness, I didn't even mean to do that. Versailles is on the outskirts. It's like its own little town. I actually have an opera theater right there at Versailles, which is interesting. I, I, I said, can I go see it? And they're like, no, you can't sign up for visitors. And there weren't any performances while we were there. So, oh, well. But apparently it's this really tiny theater that was built during the reign of uh, Louis XVI, which is the one that they uh, beheaded. So uh, there's that. But, uh, yeah, apparently they do uh, a lot of Baroque stuff naturally, which is, you know, you think about Versailles, you think about, you know, Louis XIV and uh, Jean-Baptiste Rulli, the composer who wrote for Louis XIV, and Louis XIV danced in the shows that he did. And so you think about that aesthetic, so to speak, you know, Lully, Rameau, uh, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, one day I would like to see a performance there. One day I might sing there, who knows? <laughs> but anyway, so we left and then we went back and... My sister and her friend, her friend was there with us. They wanted to go to this Shakespeare book book store or something. I I said, what, did he write there or something? They're like, no, it's just named after him. I'm like, oh, well, I don't really care at that point. I, I mean, I like Shakespeare, but, you know, I could go to a bookstore anywhere. But I, I did go inside. It was very cool. I looked around for a little bit, and then I got out of there. But they spent some considerable time there, uh, my sister and her friend. So I was sitting there having some coffee. I drank a lot of coffee while I was over there, let me tell you. Uh, But the interesting thing about that place is that it's right across the way from the Notre Dame, which which was my first time seeing it since the fire, the cataclysm that happened there, which thankfully the entire structure did not come crashing down. It's being restored, but uh, there was that. And uh, yeah, I walked around. I think also the oldest tree in Paris is like, across the street from there as well. So there's a lot to see in that little little uh, area there. So anyway, oh, I just remembered the name of our hotel. It was the Hidden Hotel, close to the Arc de Triomphe. So if you're ever in the, if you ever want to go over there, it's a nice place, I have to say. The Hidden Hotel, I guess it's hidden. So yeah, so we were walking around, we had some dinner, we had some duck, fantastic duck confit. Marvelous stuff, marvelous stuff. I mean, you you can get it here, but it's just it, it it it's not the same, people. It's not the same. So yeah, that was the one day, and the next day we had to take my sister to. Uh, she is not studying in Paris. She's studying in Lille, which is uh, close to Belgium, which is close to Brussels. Uh, 
Wow. Wow. Yeah, Belgium is close to Brussels. Who would have thought? <laughs> Can you tell that I that I've been uh I've been busy? My mind is going hundred miles an hour. I can't t- I cannot speak intelligently anymore. I sound like a babbling idiot, but that's okay. You know, I'm sure I'm sure you people get a kick out of it, don't you? Yeah, you sickos, you sickos, you you people listening to the show. You you're just laughing at my idiocy per usual. What am I? What am I? A jester over here? I'm here to amuse you. Amuse you? Funny how? How am I funny? I'm like a clown. I amuse you. I make you laugh. I'm here to amuse you. I digress. No. <laughs> now I'm conscious of saying that, and I'm going to stop saying it so much. So, but whoever you know, the person that pointed that out to me, uh, Sarah, that point, the person that pointed out to me that I say I digress a lot. I hope you realize that now. You ruined it for everyone. How about that? How about that? How does that feel? That's okay. I'm going to keep saying it just for you. Just for you. I'm not going to let your nitpicking, you know, detract from this whole experience. Because you know, I got other listeners I have to take care of. You know, I have to make sure there's something for everybody. So, anyway, so we went to Lille, which is uh, close to Brussels, which is in Belgium, uh, if I could say it right. So, yeah, that was interesting. Uh, we dropped my sister off. She was with the group. And uh, I said, all right, Markella, have fun. And, uh, we had to do some shopping for her in Leo, so we went to the supermarket, which was an interesting experience. Um, I always get tired. Um, anyway, so we walked around Leo, and that, it's a charming little town, let me tell you. Um, I mean, it's not really a town, it's more like a small city, but very charming. I mean, beautiful, beautiful buildings, beautiful architecture, beautiful churches, beautiful everything. Uh, the people were nice, the food was good. So we, I enjoyed my time there. It was brief, but I enjoyed it. And uh, so we had to stop by the supermarket to grab her some stuff, which was interesting because they had some stuff I had never seen before. And uh, they say, it goes shopping in the poor country. Just go to a supermarket. It's it's a whole event in itself. Uh, it was in this fantastic mall. I mean, the mall was beautiful. And then, uh, so yeah, we took it to her dorm. We got her settled in. And I have to say, they're, her little, her little dorm there is pretty nice. She's got, she's got a single dorm. It has bathroom, shower. It has everything you can need. So I was like, "Oh, Markella, you're doing, you're doing well. Good for you. Have a good time." And uh, we said our goodbyes, and uh, that was it. We went on the train back to back to Patty. Um, and the interesting thing about the train is that you get on the train. I mean, you get into your compartment, it is deathly still and deathly quiet, which I thought, I think it's great. I don't know why we have to talk to each other all the time. I think it's great. You know, I don't want to talk to, I, I don't know these people. You think I want to sit down and have chit chat with you? I'm, I'm, on, I'm on a train. I want to just sleep or listen to, you know, listen to some music or something. I don't need to talk to you. And let me tell you. At one point, there was a guy who was sitting. He was on. He was talking on the phone, and the uh, I don't know who told who ratted on him, but some guy on the train walked in and he said, "Excuse me, you need to either shut up or get out and you know, take your call outside the compartment." I was very impressed by that. So, I mean, they weren't they weren't messing around on that train. If you talked, you were out. Um, so there's that. Uh, yeah, it was interesting. It was an interesting experience. Um, I thought it was great. I slept. I like to sleep. I don't know if I made that clear. I like to sleep a lot. So I, I could sleep anywhere. I could sleep standing up in the rain. I could sleep. I, it, if I'm tired enough, I will literally sleep standing up. For, uh, if, if As long as I can like kind of lean my head, I'll fall asleep, which is sometimes dangerous. But anyway, so I slept. And later that night at the Theater Champs Elysees, they we went to a performance of uh, Monteverdi's *The Coronation of Popea*. Which, uh, if you listen to the show, you know I'm a great fan of Monteverdi's. He's one of my favorite composers, and so this was actually the first time I got to see one of his uh, his works live. So it was uh, exciting for me. Um, *Coronation of Popea* was his last opera. One of his, I mean, one of the the most famous of its time. Uh, 
definitely a masterpiece. It's an interesting work. It's taken from an episode in Roman history when the Emperor Nero wanted to divorce his wife, Octavia, to marry his lover, Poppea. And uh, basically, the plot revolves around them trying to get Poppea on the throne so they can, you know, he he can just be with her. And he, anyway, so, and there's the philosopher Seneca is a major character, and he's a base, and it's one of the great base roles, in my opinion, and uh, a role I very much like to sing one day. Uh, I've sang his death scene. So basically, he's the only person willing to stand up to Nero. He tells, he tells him that, a terrible idea. It's bad. You have to do the right thing. And Nero says, I don't want to hear it. And he orders Seneca to commit suicide. He he, he kills him, but he, he, just, he makes it look like a suicide. So that's a great scene. And I've, I've sang that scene a, a few times. And it's uh, one of the great marvelous bass roles, like I said. So, and the, the work is interesting. Uh, lots of characters. There's I think almost 30 roles in the opera, but you could do it with about 11 or 12 singers. And I think that's how many they had there was 12. Uh, the other good thing about the performance was, uh, I mean, the singing was, was good for the most part. So that's for sure. And the acting was good, but it was, uh, it had the authentic instruments. So the thing with Monteverdi and other early uh, Renaissance and Baroque composers is that a lot of the instruments they use, they don't exist anymore or they've been uh, replaced or upgraded. And so a lot of, uh, a lot of, if you're trying to be historically accurate, you actually use these old antique instruments or they're either antiques themselves or they're replicas of antiques. And it's really a different sound. I mean, just totally different color to the sound of these old instruments, these authentic historical instruments. I mean, it's, it's like, it's completely different. I'm not saying, I mean, it's really a beautiful sound. It's like almost impossible for these instruments to sound bad. They, they're they much, they're, the tone is warmer. They're not quite quite as harsh as some of the modern instruments. Um, it's a different different color palette and it's, it's really beautiful. So if you ever have an opportunity to go see a performance of Monteverdi's or Handel's or Vivaldi's or whoever it may be with these authentic instruments, I think you should, uh, I think you should take it. So, in Monteverdi's style, it admittedly is an acquired taste. It took me quite a few years before I uh, was able to appreciate it, but now he's one of my favorites. Uh, so, my father was not quite a fan as much, so he he dipped out at halftime, and I said, "All right, <laughs> I understand completely." He went to go have a drink at the bar, and I finished the performance, and it was uh, was rather good. They they cut a decent amount of material, but it's a very long opera, so I. I guess I understand. Um, that yeah, was very good. First time seeing Monteverdi, which was uh, happy, happy, and uh, I love the the orchestra was beautiful. So that was good. Now the next day, me and my father we walked around. We went to the top of the Arc de Triomphe, which I had never done. And it's a fantastic view of the Eiffel Tower and the Champs Elysees and all of that. And then we walked down. Uh, we walked down to where they call Trocadero, which is probably the best view of the Eiffel Tower in the city. It's this little, you're kind of like on a, you're elevated on this like hill thing. And there's all these, there's like this little, I guess it's a museum now, but it's, it's this museum and it's like framed in a way that it basically frames the Eiffel Tower with like the structure, like the building you're at. And it's just a magnificent view. There's nothing else in front of you. It's just, there's a fountain and then there's the Eiffel Tower and people take all kinds of pictures. I mean, there was a ton of people there. It was a beautiful day. Um, the sun was out, the birds were chirping, the Eiffel Tower. I mean, this is, this is France. This is Paris, baby. This is Paris. This is, this was it. It was uh, really something. And it was a beautiful walk. Um, and uh, also there was the uh, Maria Callas apartment, which is where she lived the last few years of her life. She actually died there, Maria Callas, which if you've listened to me talk before, you know that she's probably, I mean, she is my favorite singer. So there's that. Yeah, you know, she was a great Greek opera singer of the 20th century. And so we uh, we had to go pay homage. She, her apartment's like right there. It's like a 
five minute walk up the street. And they actually renamed that street part of it to the, they call it the Allee Maria Callas. So that's a nice tribute. Uh, so we got to see that. And we walked down, we walked under the Eiffel Tower. We, we saw it all. It was, uh, it was a great walk and it was a, it was a good thing. And then uh, me and my dad, we went to my friend. My, I have a friend over there. His name was Roman. And Roman was the hotel bartender during the infamous University of South Carolina Compton Choir tour trip of 2019. And uh, so I got to know him pretty well, uh, so to speak. And uh, he's a great guy. We've kept in touch over the years. And it's like, Roman, I have to come see you. And he's like, yeah, I come to I work at a new bar now. It's great. It was called Frick Wands. And it was uh, really cool. They they used only vinyl records for the music, which I like because I collect vinyl and LPs. And, uh, you know, I, I'm that obnoxious, so I, I collect the vinyls. So they only use vinyls there. And he made he made some great cocktails. It was great to see him. He's a hell of a bartender. He is, he is the best bartender in France. I'm going to call it right now. Maybe possibly the best bartender in Europe, my buddy Roman. So if you're ever in Paris... You have to go see Roman, have him make you a cocktail. He's a great guy. He's a funny guy. He's a good conversationalist. He has some stories about me. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe if he comes on the show, he'll, he'll divulge. He will, div- what the hell is that word? Divulge? He will divulge it. And uh, maybe I shouldn't have him on the show just for that reason. I, I don't know. Um, some things are best, better left unsaid. But I digress. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I got to see my friend Ramon, which was great. I, I really wanted to see him while I was there. Then he he made some great cocktails, and he was he, it was good to see him again. We got a picture, and he's doing well. So we're happy for you, Ramon. Um, what else did we do? We went. Uh, me and my dad at, at that point, we you know we had been to the Louvre, we went to Versailles, we went. You know, we went to the top of the arc. So we, the, the last couple of days, we kind of just like walked around, did our own thing and looked for some, some different stuff. And so we did a lot of walking. We walked up and down the shops of the We walked up and the, down the shopping district. We went to the free, free museum, the Petit Palais, they call it, which is a free art museum. And that was great because we found a hidden gem there. We found, they had an exhibit of these wonderful, uh, Orthodox icons, uh, Greek icons, and uh, uh, you know of the Orthodox tradition, Eastern Europe, Eastern Orthodox icons, which is, I mean, they were just beautiful, and it was really something to see. I mean, some of them were really old, you know, from literally from Constantinople back in the day, and I mean, that's how old the, the, some of the stuff was. And it was very moving uh, for us to, to see that. So, and that was beautiful. Uh, that was a beautiful museum. They had. They had the Delacroix there. We had, uh, I think they had Monet there. It was, uh, it's a great exhibit. It was totally free. So that was amazing. Um, and yeah, so they had the Orthodox exhibit and we, we really enjoyed that. They had some ancient Greek stuff, of course, which we always enjoy, Delacroix and all that. So that was really nice. That was, that was not on our agenda, but we went and we did it. And I'm glad we did. Um, and then uh, we had dinner at this wonderful place called uh, Savvy, which I guess maybe the pirates went there. I don't know. Uh, I had some duck, unsurprisingly, and some some wonderful smoked salmon, and I think some uh, some foie gras, and it was a wonderful meal. And then we went to we got to go to the Moulin Rouge, which was very nice. It was. Uh, it was, it's not easy to get in there because everybody wants to go there. That's like the cabaret. So, but we were able to get in and, uh, it was, it was an interesting experience. It was, yeah, it was, it's old, you know, it's old Paris. It's, uh, it's a classic, it's an institution and it's, uh, it's taken on a life of its own. And it was, it was great to see. I'd never been there. So the show was great. I mean, it was a lot of fun. The people, everybody was very talented. It was, uh, it was definitely fun to watch. So there's that. And, uh, <laughs> um, no, it was, it was good. They were full of talent, you know, great, great acrobatics, great acts, great dancing, great, great everything. It was a really nice experience. 
they gave you champagne. You were watching the show. It was, it was, everyone was having a good time. It was really nice. It was very, it was a lot of fun. And that, that was cool. That was something I'd never done before. So yeah. And, uh, yeah, we just kind of just walked around the last few days. We walked up and down the streets. I mean, like I'm saying, I mean, you can go anywhere in Paris and have a good time. You can go anywhere in Paris and see something unique, see something beautiful, see something new. And that's really what, I mean, that's what makes the city great. I mean, the food is fantastic. The buildings are all beautiful. You can just walk up and down the street and you're going to find something to see, something good to see, something worth seeing, which is, I mean, you can't say that for every, everywhere. So it's, uh, you know, if you ever go, I, I mean, go and enjoy it. You know, it's it's really a wonderful place. And I've, I've been there three times and I have not tired of it since. So hopefully I'll see you back in, a, in another another few years. Um, like I'm saying, I mean, you, you found some hidden gems. We actually happened upon the Greek embassy while we were there. I was like, I'm going to go knock on the door and see if the ambassador is there. He, I'm sure he would have talked to us, you know, if we spoke Greek to him. So, you know, us Greeks, we stick together. You know what? There's no, when we find each other, it's, it doesn't matter who you are, we're, 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 you know, we stick together. So that was pretty cool to find the Greek embassy. And uh, like I'm saying, I mean, you just walk around, you see wonderful things. So, I mean, it, it's a great city. It, it was, I had a great time. It was a wonderful trip. I hope I didn't, you know, bore you too much of my description of it, but I had a good time. And, uh, Oh, let me tell you, I mean, I was on cloud nine while I was there. And then I got the, <laughs> I went on the flight back and me and my father, we had separate air, you know, he flew Air France. I flew Delta. So we were on separate, totally separate things. We went to the airport together, but that was it. He flew back through, I think through JFK and I flew back, flew back through Atlanta. So we basically met, we basically went to the airport together and we split up and I tell you what, I was on cloud nine, you know, Paris, it's wonderful. We did so many things, saw so much art, beautiful. And then <laughs> I'm sitting on the plane. And I look to my left and across the aisle, the woman next to me, she's got her, her bare feet out. <laughs> uh, she's got her bare feet out and she's like inching them closer across the aisle to me. And I'm like, oh no, it's like I've, I was just in France. I was in Paris. I was enjoying myself, having beautiful food and champagne and cognac and watching opera and seeing art. And then I'm stuck next to this woman's smelly feet. It was, it really, uh, it brought you back down to earth. Let me tell you. So it was like, well, back to the real world, Manoli. So there's that. But, uh, oh, wow. What a trip. I mean, my sister's still over there, so she's having a grand old time. And it was, uh, it was very nice. I was there for about nine, nine, ten days. I mean, I think I left, uh, I left May 19th and I think I came back May 29th. So, I mean, a couple of days of travel days, but so what is that like eight days in Paris and in France? I mean, what, what could be better than that? I had, I ate some great food. I saw some beautiful architecture and art and music and, and nice people. And I saw my friend Roman and I, you know, I saw some things I'd never done before. And it was, uh, the hell of a trip. What can I say? And uh, I try to block out the ending there, the flight. I kind of just, I kind of just purge that from my mind. So that's the last time I'll think about that. That, that little uh, coda on the end of my trip. Uh, it's like, it's like, yeah, back to the real world, Manoli. No, no, let me keep this, uh, this, this, this thing going. But no, you shatter, shatters your illusions. But uh, it's okay. I, I just can't imagine like why would you why would you go barefoot on an airplane? Those things are filthy. And then I went to go use the restroom and there was somebody in there. They unlocked the door. I'm like, excuse me, that's just pull the sliding lock. Is it that hard? Do we not know how to go to the bathroom anymore? I mean, what in the world is going on with the airplanes and the flying and this and that? oh, it can't end without going on a rant. You made it the whole episode and now you gotta go on a rant. Just Focus on your trip. Yeah, the, the, the flight. The, uh, let's just ignore the flight. How about we focus on the trip? The nice, the da 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 da
Yeah, it was nice. It was uh, Paris is a beautiful city, and I had a good time, and uh, it's a wonderful trip. So I think I'll leave it at that. I will see you next time. I hope you have a very nice uh, Fourth of July weekend. God bless America and uh, all that stuff. So uh, I'll talk to you soon, okay? Sooner rather than later. It's been too long. I, you know, sometimes we grow apart, but I'm always here for you. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to leave it at that. So uh, have a great day. Talk to you later. Goodbye.